welcome to the UK TV controller session. Um, the first thing that I should uh, mention is that Roy Walker is next door. So if you want to make your way in an orderly fashion there, there's a whole thing going on about catchphrase. I'm only joking, we've locked the doors, you have to stay here. Okay, great. Um, so we are joined by the people that you need to know, the, uh, the puppet masters, the, uh, the big cheeses, the uh, top dogs, um, the fat cats of UK TV. Um, so please make some noise for Steve North, Richard Washam and Louis. Frozen! And special guest, Roy Walker. No, he's very much next door, as I say, if you do want to see him, that's where he is. Um, so before we dig down uh, deep into what is going on with UK TV, should we have a look at what's going on with UK TV? Yes. 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 <laughs> We got an audible intake of breath for the life of suction, so I'm really pleased with that. It's great. Um, so, Steve North, we have to talk about something before we move on. Um, we are in a time of peace now uh, between you and Virgin Media. Um, you personally, yes. Um, we couldn't turn on the news, basically, without you were as ubiquitous as Danny Dyer, uh, junior um, and senior. Um, so, so, so what's going on? Where are we at now? It's, it's, it's happy families, so right? It's all happy families, all resolved. Um, uh, and that's the most important thing. I mean, the reality is we, you know, we were going through a, a negotiation with, with Virgin um, and we felt that they were initially uh, massively undervaluing what, what UK TV brought to, to Virgin and brings to the, to the community as a whole. You know, our channels now uh, take up almost 10% of the commercial market. We've got the two biggest non-PSB channels in Dave and Drama. Uh, our portfolio of channels, all 10 channels combined, uh, bigger than Channel 5's portfolio, bigger than Sky's portfolio. So that's a big, big part of the market and it's only right that that valuation is, is correct. Um, and unfortunately, we're in a situation where that, uh, uh, that portfolio had been undervalued um, and therefore we went to black. Thankfully, we, all the channels are now back on air again. Um, we've got to a position that is mutually beneficial. Uh, we've got more distribution for our channels now, so channels like uh, Gold HD, uh, Dave HD, Gold, uh, uh, sorry, Good Food uh, and Home and Eden will be going to potentially up to a million more customers for Virgin, so actually more people and more viewers can see the channels now. And I think the, the fundamental, which we, we kind of talked about quite a lot during the period, was that you know, if we had accepted that initial offer from Virgin and, and hadn't gone to black, it would have affected us here today, talking about content. And the reality is that we've spent a number of years talking about UK TV's commitment to investing in new original programmes and working with the independent production sector. And uh, we can sit here now today and say that the amount of money that we've got to spend and the opportunity that we have for, for working with UK TV and with our channels is exactly the same now as it was before the Virgin uh, debate and scenario happened. Um, and if we accepted that initial offer, it wouldn't have been. Um, and that was fundamental to us. We weren't willing to jeopardise our ability to invest in new content. So you're um, not massively in the money or anything? You've not got like, all the benefits? No, look, it's, like it's, uh, look it's, it's, a, it's a position now with Virgin that is beneficial to, to both parties, I think. I think it's a deal that we are, we're all comfortable with and all very happy with. Um, and it allows us now to talk today and, and, and Rich and Hillary to really talk about the show that we want from, from the community and the shows that we're looking for. We don't I want to I be... Say, I think we, we've made significant um, increases to our originations budget over the last five years. And as Steve says, yep. every year, year on year, we've raised that money. We can't keep raising that money and creating more opportunities for, for producers unless we've got the backing of the platform. So It's about protecting that. And also just say a, a massive thank you to... To, to so many people, the viewers who, who had I think about 90,000 tweets of support from viewers, which is incredible. But also thank you to people in the room and the TV industry. I had so many messages of support and, and, uh, and emails and phone calls and, and from people saying that, that we were doing the right thing and they were behind us. And, uh, and that meant a lot to us. It meant a real kind of uh, a sense of unity with the community, which was really important. And also just lots of complaints about the kind of virgin connectivity, which isn't actually your area. Yeah. So people that have been messaging Steve about how good their Wi-Fi is, that's kind of a, really not me. It's like a separate issue. So if we I could just same issues. Oh, yeah, if right, we could just yeah. separate those things. Um, but we don't want to be reductive about it. But who won? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say who we won, but we definitely didn't lose. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, mm, stay clear of that one. Okay. Um, we uh, need to say hello to you, Richard. Hello, Richard. Hello. Say hello to Richard, everybody. Hello. Great, thanks. Um, so you're the, the person that people need to schmooze and charm and seduce. Are they the right, are they the right words? <laughs> They're written down here, so they must this, be right. Um, I have to say, th this session has taken a turn. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to happen. Well, how... Um, uh, would you know what? But actually, straight off, it's I think it's really important to say. So I'm going to... I'm gonna, try and give people a bit of an insight into the way we work, I think, which is, feels like a good time to do it. <laughs> but I think, actually, um, it's really important to say that it doesn't really work. It's not just me. It's firstly, Steve and I 
decide what we're going to make. And there are other people as well who have to, who have to kind of agree to release the money. Uh, but also Hillary and the, and the rest of the team. I think in a minute we're going to put a slide up so I can I can do it right team. now if you want. Yeah, there, are, there are lots of people yeah. who... <laughs> There are lots of people. Wow, you're yeah, amazing. Uh, there are lots of people involved in in making decisions, and actually, it's really important to say. And I think, in some ways, this is slightly different from some of the other broadcasters. We kind of pride ourselves on some of the points of difference. We run a very, very ag egalitarian um, ship at UK TV, and actually, it's really important that that all of these people uh, on the board and other people in in the channel teams are involved in making those decisions. So, the, actually, we've. For the very first time, we announced this just a couple of days ago, we split the team into genres. Before, there were certain, uh, obviously, expertises that people would come to the team with, but broadly, we, we, you know, people were kind of fairly free to work across a number of things. Because we're now producing uh, a very large amount of content, certainly relative to what we've produced before. So this year, around about four to 500 hours of content across every genre other than children's news and current affairs. So we're, we're operating pretty much everywhere. It, we, we kind of needed to, I needed to restructure the team uh, in order to, to make sure that the kind of communications and the relationships with uh, with producers was working most effectively so that they can get the ideas heard. And we have such a huge number of ideas coming through the door now. We've got um, just over 100 shows currently in the pipeline. Uh, and that's, this is a massive scaling up for us over the last few years that Steve and I have been working uh, very hard on. And I've been kneeling on Steve occasionally to get him to release more money from other bits of the budget for us to spend. And, and very kindly, he's let us do that. So, so just very quickly, so we've, we've now got basically three genres up here, which are broad genres. And then within that, we've got lots of different areas that we're looking at. And we're going to step through some of those in more detail. So Hillary here is uh, not only my deputy, but is also the head of Factual and Factual Entertainment. Uh, and she, she, and when I say when when we decided Factual and Factual Entertainment, she's already deputy director of commissioning and head of Factual and Factual Entertainment. That felt quite long. We should probably add entertainment on there as well, but it's just you've got to stop somewhere. But really, it's everywhere on that spectrum, kind of from from Factual through to entertainment shows. Uh, and she works. She and her team work across all of the channels that do that. And again, we'll come into more detail on that in a minute. Uh, and then Ian, uh, who's sitting in the front row, who's our head of comedy entertainment, uh, looks after lots of the uh, comedy entertainment shows on Dave uh, and, lots of the, um, and lots of the gold shows and works very hard in that specific genre. And then we've got Pete, who's also uh, sitting in the front row there, who's our head of scripted, who looks after scripted comedy and now more recently drama. So between this uh, whole team, um, uh, and very recently joined by Philippa Colley Cousins as well, who's a uh, specifically a drama specialist, who's kind of getting our drama um, strategy up and running. And again, we're going to talk more about that later on. But uh, and I, I know they're all in the room, but I, but I do want to say, and I think it's really important because I think this is part of how we work. Uh, and, and people here, I hope, would attest to this, and some of the quotes that are outside the room, that actually our relationships with our suppliers are really, really important to us. We may not have the financial muscle of some of the bigger players, but we absolutely have the relationship. And I, I'm hugely proud of the brilliance of these people and the relationships they, that they've built, not only with producers, but also with agents and talent. And that allows us to massively punch above our weight, which is, you know, which is what we're trying to do. So, so my, this is my kind of hopefully three minute guide. Feel free to <laughs> do that in the background. Um, to, to how commissioning works UK TV and what kind of things we're looking for. So what we're effectively trying to do, and this, you know, there's, there's no good way of saying this in a different way from other broadcasters, but effectively we're trying to be heard. So we operate in a particular part of the market, and there are lots, of, as, as we know, there are more and more chances to watch different types of content across lots of different platforms, and somehow we have to get people to come and notice our programmes. That's, that's the fundamental thing. If we can't do that, we're, you know, we're, we're wasting our money. So that is absolutely principal to anything that we, that we commission. And a bit like, and actually we're slightly different from other broadcasters there because my bit of the company is not trying to fill the whole schedule. So Steve and his channel teams, they've got to fill a linear schedule of, of 20 hours, is that? 12, a range from, from 20 to 24 hours a day, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, so they've yeah, got to fill it all. Hours there on a day, 24. <laughs> we, I know we, that much. <laughs> we, we just have to work on the, and, you know, and again, with the producers creating original content for us, we just have to work on what I would call the prestige pieces. So for the, the SVODs have got this advantage, right? They don't have to fill linear schedules. They can just go and do big pieces that they feel move their reputation on. And that's absolutely what we want to do. So that's really important to us, is, is getting people to reassess UK TV and, uh, and, and what we do. And actually, we've been doing these sessions for a while now. It's really nice to see a big full room, room full of people. That tells me that people are more interested in what we're doing. That is, you know, for me, that's a real marker of success. 
So we're trying to get heard. How do we do that? I'd say there are, you know, there's, there are lots of different ways, but broadly, four big ones. Talent, it's hugely important for us. It's absolutely the quickest way of marketing a show and getting it heard about. Uh, access can be incredibly important when there's uh, extraordinary access to somewhere where people haven't had access before. Uh, quality, we've been working really hard on all of our shows, be, be they 30k, uh, a half hour through to hundreds of thousands uh, and, and drama pieces that are coming through to make sure that our shows are absolutely at the same or better quality level of any other broadcaster in the UK and I think we're really delivering on that. Uh, and then originality. And even when we're doing something which, uh, which may be a, a slightly smaller budget than um, some of the other bigger pieces, I want uh, the team to go away and to think about how we come at it from a slightly different approach and we add a little twist to it. So, so, four very, so four things which I would really like people to take away with them, which I think are, are, are definitely worth bearing in mind. And these are four things that go through our minds when we're sitting in the room, all of us, and we do. All of, the, all of the different genre heads sit and talk about all the genres together, and we all, we all um, discuss them and, and make decisions together. But four things that will be going through our minds is, for me, it's... I, there's lots of brilliant producers in this room, and I know quite a few of them, uh, and we're really grateful to work with them. I know they can deliver brilliant shows. So I'm in some ways less concerned about what's between minute one and minute 59 of the show. I'm more concerned about what happens about five minutes before that show starts. So effectively, that is how do people know about our show? So if you're on Netflix, you, you, know, you, you go and you've got the trailer automatically starts, you've got pictures, you've got lots of ways of communicating what our show is about. We've got, we've got less ways. We've got a fantastic press and marketing team who, who market our shows uh, extremely effectively and get lots of press for them, but somehow we have to communicate to, to people what that show is about. And I'm interested in what makes people make the decision five minutes before our show starts to actually pick up the controller. Because if they don't know about it, they're literally, they're never going to come. So that's really important, is how, how, how simple is the idea? What's the title like? What's the premise like? What's the proposition? Does it grab people? Secondly, is, is part of what we are doing is trying to, uh, trying to establish and, um, uh, the tone of voice of the channel. So Dave, for example, has a very specific tone of voice, and actually the commissions are the, are, are the best way of communicating that. And, and for us, I think it's really important to remember that the commissioners are all commissioning stuff that is coming about 18 months ahead of where we are now, and that actually lots of people who've been watching our shows over the last year or so are probably working off something that we commissioned maybe 18 months before. So there's potentially a kind of three-year gap there between what what you're seeing and what we actually want to do. So it's really worth trying to get good conversations going with the commissioners to try and work out how we get ahead of that. Two more very quick things. One is, uh, is on the audience. Is we, we have um, channels that are very specifically targeted around certain um, areas. So Dave, for example, being uh, increasingly a co-viewing adult comedy channel um, rather than the male one, a co-viewing one. But it's really important for us that our shows are targeted to a specific audience. So Taskmaster is a really good example, right? Taskmaster is watched by, my, all of my kids watch it, my nine-year-olds absolutely love it, fall off the sofa watching it, but we didn't make the show for them, they just, they love it. We made the show, Hillary made the show, and, and, the, and the brilliant team at Avalon made the show uh, for uh, a kind of early 30-something audience, and we get that right, and we get the tone of voice feeling very um, well-defined, and then a bigger audience comes. And it's the exact opposite of getting a really big show like Bake Off and thinking, well, Bake Off would work for you guys, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. Bake Off is designed to pull in everyone from 8 to 80, right? We want shows that feel very targeted to a particular audience, and then other people will come. And then the last thing, which I think is really, uh, if, I, if I left with one, one thought as you leave here, is that our, our sense of ambition is absolutely paramount. When we, when we, talk, and we, when we talk about the, kind of, um, the competitive sets of the people that we, that we compete with, the channels we compete with, it's not people that are alongside us in the EPG, it's BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Channel Four, and those are the people in terms of quality and ideas that we want to be to be up against. And, and I think, thankfully, lots of the hours that we're delivering now are. So please think big scale, think ambitious.
So I know it's a lot of waffles, a lot of information there, but hopefully that's quite useful. My mind was blown by think of the five minutes before the show, and then you explained <laughs> it, and I was like, okay, that makes more sense now. <laughs> but also look into the future, three years into the future. That's not asking a lot, guys, it's fine. No, 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 no. Totally it's fine. just not what we're asking you to do is predict yeah, the future. Just to add to that as well, just about where we're commissioning as well. So obviously we have 10 channel network and, and you could do play. You know, fundamentally, Dave W, uh, big commissioning channels, as is gold, um, increasingly kind of really, uh, and also yesterday now we're doing, you know, some commissioning around co-production in particular on that. So, uh, and, and moving forward, going to that drama space with Alibi and Drama. So, so they're the kind of the channels really to kind of focus on. So when Richard talks about those, those, those uh, particular audiences, they're the channels to think about. They're the channels to have a look at, to watch, to understand what the tone of voice is, what the content mix is, to understand the kind of shows that will be working for us. And we're going to talk about that content in a bit more detail, but I think we should talk about uh, Factual and Factual Lens. Hilary Rosen, you're up. Hello. Uh, can, you, can you tell me, um, just, well, first things first, tell me a little bit about your, your part of this chart, I guess. My part. Um, it's a lovely part. Uh, it's a lovely that. part, uh, and my lovely team, Natalie and Helen, who are sitting in the front row, Kirsty, who's not here. Um, so for all of you producers in the room who are uh, thinking of pitching factual, factual entertainment, entertainment ideas, we are your go-to people. Uh, Pick a, pick, a, pick a card, pick any card. <laughs> uh, pick someone you know, someone you like, someone you don't know. Um, we all, as Richard said, we all, we're a very small team. We talk, to, we sit next to each other, we natter day in, day out. Ideas that uh, appeal to us all uh, come to a meeting where they're discussed between the team. So you will be heard by all of us and we think that's a really important principle. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think it's unique. I think most commissioning teams do work like that, but that is how we work too. Um, I think I'm going to start by talking about some of our successes and some of the things that we are excited about. So we've been uh, working as a team for a few years together now and uh, some of the shows that we've commissioned have landed really well and what's very exciting about this year is that we are, we are growing some of our franchises. So we, uh, Brown Bob make a fantastic show for us inside the ambulance, it's our standout success on W, um, our pay channel and we are, we are, uh, we've commissioned uh, a, a, another series called Inside the Vets which has just gone out uh, and we'll be expanding that brand again. It's a fixed, small fixed rigs in, in unique locations and we, we've got a new show which we can't, we're not announcing yet but we're continuing to grow that brand so where we find success uh, we really get excited about it. We commission, we've commissioned additional hours in that space and we really want that, that brand, the inside the dot 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 brand to become something that's really strong strongly identified with W, so the audience, we know they love those shows and we're trying to think of ever sort of increasing diff different places and ways to move that brand on. What do you think it is that connects about those shows? Um, I think it's about the kind of unmediated real life sense. So we're inside the ambulance, it's a mini rig, there's no crew, we're seeing uh, the stories unfold as the paramedics see them, as they happen. So I think for the audience, you know, the, we know the audience love, love those sort of health, health type shows, you know, hospitals and all of those, all those, those places, those emergency places. Um, and what we do on Inside the Ambulance, what Brown Bob do, is they deliver the most fantastic characters. So the paramedics have become the stars of the show. And although the, although the stories are obviously intensely interesting for the audience, I think it's the returning cast of characters. And I think there's no other factual show in that space that's, do, that's, that's, that, that's doing that sort of thing. So we're growing that. I was going to say, it's not a million miles away from scripted either. It's, it's brilliant characters yeah. and, and it's real life drama. It's drama, but it's real yeah. life drama. Yeah. And actually you come back and you see the characters again and again and you, and you fall in love with them. But actually at the heart of it is fantastic narrative storytelling with really exciting kind of tense endings, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's right. I think it is returning characters. Um, so similarly, so Dr. Christian, so Richard talked earlier about talent being paramount for us as a network. It's a really shortcut. It's a way of immediately telling our audience, you know, what we stand for and who we like and what we're offering. Um, Dr. Christian, uh, uh, Helen Nightingale has been working with Dr. Christian on the channel with Firecracker for, uh, I think, a couple of years now, and we're growing that brand. So we have got a show that's going to play at eight o'clock called um, Dr. Christian, 12 Hours to Cure Your Street. He's going out on the road. Um, that's a new format. We're bringing back the uh, Dr. Christian, we'll see you now brand. We're doing some specials. So again, you know, where we have success, we're trying to grow those brands, grow those faces and think of 
new and different ways of supplying content to the audience because those shows they're playing on more than just one channel so they, they you know they premiere on W but they also play on really so they play in another space so having lots of different content that we can offer the audience so whenever they come to the channels there's something that feels familiar and that they know and they like and they know is exclusive to us is hugely important. I think that's a good point because all that we do is that you know we have a we have a network of channels that sits in both the pay and the free universe, and that gives opportunity for, for a lot of our shows to have um, two audiences and, and, and actually work twice as, yeah. as well. So for, from a producer point of view coming in, we've got the ability of giving your, 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 um, your show love twice and, and giving it two different chances to get to two different audiences and really increasing the kind of the awareness and the scope that that kind of show can to take, which is really exciting. So, so that's uh, kind of su successes so far. What are we looking forward to? What's coming up? So it, um, it's been quite hard to sort of, you know, it's like saying, who's your favourite child? To, trying to work out what I'm going to talk to you briefly about yeah, today. Yeah, you've picked three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three I've got children. three children, so that's probably, <laughs> probably something to do with that. Um, I, uh, I want to share, uh, we've got a show that's uh, with Making for Dave, uh, which we announced earlier today. It's called Border Force America's Gatekeeper. Um, this is a brilliant access piece uh, that was brought to us by a fantastic producer, Stuart Morris at Stampede. And and he's got exclusive access to the Customs and Border Protection Patrol Unit, who basically um, police the American, the, the, uh, the American-Mexican border, the Tex-Mex border. And no one's ever actually filmed with them in, uh, to any great extent. I mean, some people have done some occasional filming, but no one's actually been embedded with, 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 with um, that unit. And it has delivered extraordinary stories I mean the, the kind of stories that you see in movies and these kind of drugs busts and extraditions and prisoner exchanges are happening on a daily basis on that border that's a show that's going to be playing on Dave um, later in the year it's it's got great production values it feels really cinematic we think it's really an exciting commission for the channel it will fit into the the blue flashing lights and the slightly more adrenaline type shows that we play early in the evening before all the comedy kicks in at nine and ten so that's something we're really looking and for. I think there's, there's something interesting about that show as well so we've had some Dave is obviously a very well-known British comedy brand, but it, but it started to bring in programming from the US. Um, um, Storage Hunters was f fantastically um, successful for us, so much so that we ended up making Storage Hunters UK. Uh, uh, but this is the first show that we've done that is kind of fully American. So this one, so Storage Hunters UK was our commission, but it was like a UK version of a US show. This one is a completely... US shows, shot in, in the US about Americans and actually it shows that we can stretch beyond just British stories uh, and so increasingly I, I think it's really important that we are um, kind of internationally focused as well and that's not necessarily because we need money from, from other producers or, uh, or because we want to sell the content around the world, it's actually because TV travels all around the world and the kinds of shows that our audience are going to want to watch, they have access to lots of US content and so we, we would expect them to have a much more kind of globalised attitude towards content generally, and we need to reflect that, I think. But it means there's great opportunities for us to go and explore other areas. Yeah, we're not um, geo-blinkered, are we? As, as, as no, yeah. no, not at all. And I mean, uh, you know, what that show requires is, is a British sensibility in terms of the way it's made, and that's what it's got, and it's being edited in the UK, and, and we're, you know, it, it, it's a, I think it's really quite an exciting piece. Um, on W, uh, our female skewing f uh, channel in pay, but not exclusively for women, um, um, we're really excited about some orthodox pieces that are coming through. Uh, we saw that fantastic clip of uh, Cherry Healing, Healy gasping as she saw uh, liposuction uh, in front of her. Um, she's done a brilliant series for us called Sex, Lies and Liposuction. And it's... Uh, we got pitched a lot of plastic surgery. We got pitched a lot of ideas which, uh, which were things like, we've got access to a plastic surgery clinic up in Liverpool and do you want to show around there? And that never felt kind of like the way we wanted to approach it. It felt like it could be a bit grubby and a little bit down market and not particularly distinctive. Uh, BBC Studios came and talked to me about uh, stuff that they might do for us uh, in, their, in their new sort of, in their new iteration. And, and they pitched plastic surgery. They said, you know, would you ever, you know, I know you don't do specialist factual, would you ever be interested in plastic surgery? And actually, when we started to talk about it, I actually thought 
there was an author journey and when we put when we, when they went away and found <coughs> her and found that she was genuinely considering whether or not to have some kind of procedure uh, because she was worried about aging and being on TV and being a woman of a certain age and not newly single it all suddenly made sense for me and I thought that would be a perfect investigation exploration for our audience and she's made what I think is a stunning series a three-parter and it is genuinely jaw-dropping the stuff the stuff that she sees but it's about her you see her trying to make a decision about whether she is or isn't going to have some kind of procedure at the end of the series you will have to watch it to see what she did in Spoiler, the end uk tv made her have a hundred procedures yeah but you probably won't recognize um yeah. i'm gonna have to move you on i know there's i know there's one before we see a clip so do shout okay about very that. quickly i'm gonna just mention something that we're really excited about we've uh, can now tell you that stacy dooley is coming to the channel she's going to be doing a series for us it called it's going to be called Stacey Dooley sleeps over. I'm going to not say anything more than that, but that's going to be coming sometime next year. Very excited to bring her to the channel. And then most exciting, we've got a clip now, which we're going to play in a minute. Emma Willis has made a fantastic series with Helen Nightingale, um, Emma Willis delivering babies. Uh, I met her several years ago. We talked about what she might come and do for the channel. She talked about her parents working in the NHS and her devotion to the NHS. And she said, if I hadn't been a TV presenter, I probably would have been a midwife. And from there, we came up with this idea that she would go and train to be a maternity care assistant in her local hospital and that's what she did she spent 10 weeks on shift and this is a clip that i hope the magic of television only works when you do it hillary brilliant so i i guess people in the room are thinking what should producers be pitching to you and what is not for you what do, what doesn't fit uh so, very quickly, um, bring us factual entertainment ideas for W. Uh, not everything has to be an authored piece. Uh, bring us distinctive, entertaining pieces that can really punch above their weight, that have a very clear USP that we can sell very easily. Think of the poster and how can we bring audience to it. Um, on Dave, we are looking for those pieces early evening that we play at seven and eight in the evening. We saw a quick clip in our showreel of Yanni, um, uh, our supercar customizer guy and we're looking for other car formats we've got some other things in play but we're always looking for more sort of original ways of doing cars it might be a transactional series universes you know where where are those where are those places who are those people who are going to feel really sticky um, we are we'd love some food shows on Dave actually uh, we used to play man v food that used to do brilliantly that doesn't work anymore we, they don't make that anymore what's that modern version of that show have a think about that we are always looking for extraordinary access we increasingly have access pieces that play across the network we, we, we shuffle them between the channels uh, we've had into the fire we've had 999 Rescue Squad, Helicopter ER. Have you got some brilliant access to some extraordinary group of people? They might not be in the UK, they might be somewhere else, they might be doing something exceptional. And then, as Steve briefly said on yesterday, we are exploring opportunities, some in co pro space, some in, you know, funded in other ways in that space of engineering, slightly slightly older skewing pieces. Have a look at have a look at yesterday. We're we're thinking about what we might play there and how that might work. So briefly that's what we're looking for. It's a lot of food for yeah. that. Uh, food I for, hope you, I hope come, you come and see us. <laughs> yeah, come, come and see us. Come say hi. Um, Steve, uh, big successes so far for UK TV, a, a lot of success in the comedy entertainment space. Uh, series like Taskmaster, Series 6, a lot of people loving Series 6. They said it was one of the best series. Um, and also said it kind of doesn't matter if you win or not, it's more just the taking part and uh, almost coming second to last is better. Um, so um, why, why do you think they do so well for you? I mean, I think they're, they're incredibly engaging shows, and yeah, Dave has, has, has been built upon, upon those kind of those, uh, those panel shows, but those comedy format entertainment shows. Um, and for us, yeah, they're inclusive, they're engaging, they're relatable, at the heart, they're just really funny. Quite often there's a bit of silliness to Thank them. You. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> a lot of silliness to them. Um, <laughs> but uh, but audiences love them. And I think, you know, Taskmaster, a great example. Series 7 coming out, another great stellar class. Not as good as Series it's 6. Matter. There's but, another series in the but, night, yeah. Uh, Jessica Nappett, um, Kerry Godleyman, Phil Wang, James A. Castor and Rod Gilbert uh, for Series 7, which will be out this this year. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a great kind of example of, of comedy entertainment shows for us. So it's 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 not a panel show but it's kind of a panel show it feels original it feels unique it feels different 
Um, at the same time, from a talent point of view, you've got some great talent there. So, you know, Rod Gilbert and, and, uh, and Greg Davis going for Series 7, you know, fantastic talent that we can help to sell that show. But at the same time, the likes of, you know, Jessica Nabbit, um, Gary Godleyman, Phil Wang, James Acaster, newer talent that's kind of coming through. So it gives us that ability of having well-known, established talent to sell the show, but also still being able to work with new uh, talent coming through. Um, yeah, another great example of that is, is uh, Ramesh Raganathan, who was in the first series of, of, of Taskmaster, just as he was starting to come through as a kind of uh, a comic who's now utterly incredible and making Judge Ramesh for us. So, you know, that kind of transition is really important. Um, and I think other shows, John Richardson's uh, Ultimate Warrior, which we've, we've talked about, um, and also Matt Ford's Unspun as well, which I think we're, we're really proud of, that we, uh, yeah, we went out there and made a satirical comedy show um, at a time when nobody else really was. Um, and I think for a, for a commercial channel to go and take that kind of leap of faith is really important. But again, it felt different, it felt original, it felt unique. And I think those kind of, those attributes are really important to us. And I think we've got a clip of Judge Romish to show, which is, you know, Imagine Judge Judy, the classic kind of judge show, <laughs> but rather than having a serious proper judge, you have uh, Ron Wesh Ranganathan. Don't there. imagine it. Watch it. We've got a clip. <laughs> <laughs> um, as if it was a task on Taskmaster, in 60 seconds, can you tell me uh, what is coming up and, and what, what is in the pipeline that we should be looking out for? Um, so yeah, new shows coming up. Uh, we've got a show called H uh, Hypothetical in production at the moment, which um, again, a great example, I think, of what makes a, a, a comedy format right for, for Dave. Uh, simple idea, so Josh Whittacombe and, and James Acaster are running that show. Simple idea is they set hypothetical questions to comedians to answer. And I think, you know, when you walk around Edinburgh throughout the month of August, you kind of see what happens when you let comedians use their imagination and their pure creativity to come up with ideas. It's chaos. Uh, it's complete <laughs> chaos. Um, and, you know, all of our shows, I think, kind of going, uh, as we've made them in the past and going forward, is about trying to give the talent the opportunity to express themselves. And from a comedy ends point of view, that's giving kind of comedians the ability of doing what they do best, which is be funny and entertain people, use their imagination, be completely innovative. So that's a really exciting show. Uh, Beat the Internet, a uh, show hosted by John Robbins, which is a, a kind of game show. Um, exciting for us as that will play uh, earlier in the schedule, so pre-Watershed show. Um, and it basically uses the kind of internet search engines. So if you were to ask the internet search engine a question, what would the answer be? Um, and you get those kind of variety of options. So that's based around that territory. Um, and then also just touching on gold as well, from a comedy ends point of view, I think it's really important that, you know, we do commission quite a lot on gold. So we make a lot of kind of those, those archive retrospective shows. So celebrating uh, some of the wonderful heritage of comedy that we have on the channel. So we made Din Lady's Diaries uh, early in this year. We've got Saluting Dad's Army, so Dad's Army retrospective coming on later this year. Um, and also really exciting is a show called My Favourite Sketch, which is hosted by Sally Phillips, which uh, she sits down with comedians and asks about their favourite sketches and uh, uh, what they like, what, what made the second tick, what, uh, what inspirations they've kind of taken from those ideas and those sketches. And then they do a bit of recreation around that as well. So, so that's really exciting. Um, and then finally, what's coming up, another piece with uh, a show with David Jason. So we made a couple of shows with David Jason last year, one around Only Fools and Horses and one around the story of his life. Um, and we've got a new show with him next year called David Jason Planes, Trains and Automobiles. So he is a, he's a closet um, engineering fan. He, he's a trained pilot, he's a mechanic, he's a bit of a train spotter. So we're sending him to America to, to go out there and find all those kind of ridiculously huge kind of engineering pieces that happen out there. So that's a really, that's a really exciting piece for us because that's a bit of a, 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 a new territory for gold. You know, we've always been very much about centering what we do around comedy and Rich and I have talked for a number of years about how we can constantly or continue to broaden out gold and take it to a new audience and get new content on there. And I think that's a really exciting opportunity where we're using a piece of talent that is so well known to the gold audience, so well loved to the gold audience and using that talent to take people on a slightly different journey, uh, which hopefully will kind of open up more opportunities to do similar kind of shows in the, in the future for, for gold. What we, what we found is if you base all of your shows on, on classic British archive, unfortunately the archive doesn't change that quickly. Yeah, you run out <laughs> you of really run out of ideas very quickly. So we really need to kind of push those, take the talent and push them into new areas. I think David Jason on the Tex-Mex border, just saying, you can marry those two ideas. Um, so uh, they like it, they like it. Um, from the people in the room, what are you looking for? So just really quickly, um, gold we kind of talked about, so more retrospective shows, more shows that harness the archive. I mean, the real kind of, the real uh, 
big one for us, though, is trying to find that format, that idea that can harness all of the archive rather than being centered around the single show. And, and, and uh, my favorite sketch goes into that territory, but I think there's more for us to explore there. Um, and the same, more talent vehicles that we've talked about. And then on Dave, it's, it's comedy format. So it's, it's doing more of what we're doing. You know, I think we've, we've had a pretty consistent message on the kind of shows we're looking for for Dave for, for a number of years now. And, and it's thinking about Taskmaster, <coughs> Judge Romesh, John Richardson, Ultimate Warrior, Hypothetical, Dave Gorman, One Life is Goodish. Thinking about those shows, what's the next iteration? How can we take a common entertainment format, make it feel fresh, make it feel unique, make it feel different to other shows on the channel and on other channels, um, and using uh, talent in particular, to, to help drive those, to help us sell those shows, but also finding ways to incorporate new talent and then ensuring that everything that we do has that Dave tone of voice uh, uh, amongst it and that, that's that kind of consistency. Um, and the other thing to say we're kind of looking for, actually looking for, you know, we're really keen for, for more ideas coming in that have um, a, a bigger kind of female-led, so you know, female hosting or female ideas or female-led uh, cast is hard. So broadening out from being you know, seen as being a purely male channel, as Richard said, it's not, it's a dual viewing channel, so, so more kind of female piece ideas as well. And re really important for us as well, I think, because comedy entertainment is an area that didn't feel like there had been that much uh, um, kind of new formats, new original formats in the in the whole industry in the last few years, and it really feels like with some of those shows led by Taskmaster that we are leading our, our competitors in that area, and we want to we want to get ahead again. They, you know, we we hear a lot of stories of of other broadcasters asking for what their for their Taskmaster, and that's brilliant. That's you know that's a source of great pride for us. We just want to get ahead of the game again and get the next few ideas coming in. They're going to continue to lead in that area. Well, let's talk about that because that is an area that you lead in, and I know that uh, we need to talk about scripted. Uh, comedy shows but also drama because you've got big big plans for that so we were, we were talking earlier on about kind of the the vision for that and, and how you pitch that so can you just talk us through that a little bit yes uh, so um i'm going to try and do because i appreciate time's running on so i'm going to try and do um scripted quite quickly sorry pete because i know says your area it's really important to you um uh, but um but so we've got kind of four there are four areas really that pete's looking at so um we've got our kind of traditional uh, scripted comedies as i call them so we brought back red dwarf red dwarf is is, is a massive rater. I mean, genuinely, I think sometimes people forget. Murder on the Blackpool Express, which we did on Gold, uh, did, I think, 1.8 million on the, yeah, on the premiere. Week, yeah. I mean, people, it kind of flies under the radar, but that's like car show on BBC One. You know, that's a massive number for pay TV. Red Dwarf, massive figures for us. We've, we've now got Zapped, which is our... Um, which is the story of Brian Weaver, who gets sucked out of this world into a kind of parallel fantasy world, uh, which is in a similar kind of quite strong um, trad sitcom kind of um, very high concept area. I think we've got a clip yeah, of it. Yeah, should have a sneak so peek at that. Quite Good. high concept. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so off the back of that, we, so, we, so that's now coming back for its third series. Um, off the back of that, we wanted to do something that had felt a bit more set in the real world, or, or significantly <laughs> more set in the real world. Um, so we, uh, we made a three-part series called Porters, uh, which is written by Dan Sefton, and we've now brought that back for six parts. Uh, really excited by the evolution of that. It just feels, uh, it feels like it's going in a really good space. I think we've just finished shooting. We're all in the edit now. Um, led by Ed Easton and uh, Susan Wacoma, uh, and now joined by Danny Mays. Um, which I think is a massive piece of casting for us. He's, he started out in comedy. Uh, he was desperate to get back and do some more comedy. The stuff I've seen coming through the edit is, is exceptional. So that's brilliant at one end of the spectrum. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we've got some of the pieces coming through for W. I'm trying to kind of segue all these things together. Um, so later this year, we've got Women on the Verge, which is a half hour comedy show um, written, co-written by Sharon Horgan uh, with Lorna Martin based on her book Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown which tells the story of three 30-something um, women who are kind of uh, ambitious, career-driven, they're at different stages, they're all at the same stage but they're, they're, their lives going in very different ways. So one wants children, one's got a child but is now divorced um, and um, uh, and Kerry Condon, who's our, who plays our lead character, Laura, is kind of somewhere between all of these worlds and is basically slightly lost and watching her life unravel at a time when she feels like it should be uh, all the people around her kind of getting better and better. Um, so very excited about that. That comes out in the autumn. Um, and then and then moving further along towards drama. And I really want to get that idea that it's not, we don't think of it in terms of this is either a scripted comedy or it's a drama. We're playing along the full spectrum of shows. 
Um, uh, and actually, sorry, because I know we've got another clip, so I'm going I'm I'm to come to Flack in a second. Um, and a good example of that is, uh, so Murder on the Blackpool Express, we had on gold. Uh, so it's a, um, a kind of feature-length show, it's a longer show, uh, and uh, a strong comic tone. It's a take on the Agatha Christie story, originally rated absolutely through the roof, um, led by Johnny Vegas and Sean Gibson, uh, written by Jason Cook. We've got a follow-up uh, to that coming soon, called Death on the Tyne. See if you can spot which Agatha Christie novel that is a take on. Um, uh, I'm very excited about that. It's really rare to get those pieces that punch through at that kind of level. Um, it's got a lovely, honest tone of voice to it. It's got a beautiful uh, kind of comic sensibility. And it kind of sits between comedy and drama uh, as, a, as a pure comedy drama. Um, and then moving right down the kind of dramatic end is Flack, which is our first real drama piece. Uh, made by Hattrick, fronted by uh, Oscar winner Anna Paquin, um, along with uh, Lydia Wilson and Sophie Oconedo. It's the story of uh, a female-run PR agency where uh, Anna and her, and her co-workers have to kind of go around basically tidying up the crap that her clients have, um, or the kind of terrible situations her clients have got themselves into. It's sharply written, it's super modern, I think it's, uh, um, I'm really, really proud of it actually, I'm really, uh, you know, proud of what Pete's done, he's done a fantastic job, and um, the guy's a hat-trick, and we've got a clip of that too. We do. So a, a few really important things there. Anna Paquin, amazing for us to be working with a, an Oscar winner on our, on our first drama. Very proud of that. It's a fantastic cast. It's also a great uh, mixture of kind of story of the week and serialised elements uh, that run across the, in, the, the sorry, a, a narrative arcs that run across the whole series. So you watch um, Robin, uh, the, the lead character, evolve over that time and kind of uh, and struggle with her own life, while she's also struggling to kind of keep that of her clients on board. Each week, there's a nice big cameo from someone who, um, which gives us some kind of complete story within each episode. So it's really, I'm really excited by that opportunity, and that then kind of leads us on to the next stage of our drama development and which Philippa Collie Cousins is working on very specifically now which is finding a number of uh, crime dramas and thrillers for alibi and drama so again Hillary was talking about how uh, our channels are sharing content so premieres on alibi in pay and then uh, gets a repeat on drama um, further down the line which gives us the opportunity to go and get those two audiences and we're looking for uh, we've got, I think, about four or five have gone into development now at script stage, but we're looking for four pieces next year. Uh, probably half of those will be more episodic um, procedurals. Um, uh, Death in Paradise works really well for us. Something, something in the kind of classic procedural, uh, episodic, to episodic vein. And then we're also looking for those bigger, punchier, um, kind of darker pieces. Um, and we look with, with, you know, some envy at some of the brilliant pieces that are, that are generated by some of the other broadcasts. There's been a very long uh, tradition of fantastic, spiky, um, dark, internationally appealing um, thrillers, and we're, we're we're after some of those too. So there's quite a bit of um, space to play, as I say, all the way from, from traditional scripted comedy all the way through to drama now. Okay, great. Well, I know a lot of people will be uh, sat in here thinking, I've got ideas, I've come to lots of sessions, and I will be going to lots of sessions across the week, um, but why, as the king of commissioning, as you asked me to call you uh, before you came in here, <laughs> um, why should people be, I hope I said that right, pe why should people be bringing their ideas to UK TV? I, th I think what I'd really impress upon people is that, is that it, and I think people don't realise the kind of scale that we're operating at now. So I think four or five hundred hours across all those genres is is significant, and it op and it and it generates opportunities for people in this room, and it generates opportunities for talent that they may not get elsewhere. So Emma Willis. Uh, delivering Babies is a show that she didn't get to make elsewhere. She really wanted to make that show and she came and made it with us. Um, and we, all, we, are, we work very, very hard indeed to, to create fantastic relationships with talent and to put them front and centre in our, in, our, in our shows. And that is both talent behind the camera and in front of the camera and we trust them. 
and we listen to them and we have a very collaborative approach. We are involved and we've got experts, some of those brilliant experts sitting in the front row there and the team uh, who will help and help make those shows better. And I see it time and time again that they, that they help raise the quality of those shows. And we also work with brilliant producers who bring, who bring brilliant ideas and together they're, they're making great quality shows. Does that, does that mean people shouldn't be bringing newer talent to you? We are. I, it's, very important for us that we discover new talent. It is also important that we find a way of supporting them. So just finding new talent, just posting them out there in a show, uh, in a in a in a kind of um, market where there's so such proliferated platforms and so many opportunities to watch different things, may not help them very much. So as Steve said, Taskmaster is a good example of a show that marries people with quite big comedy profiles with people with emerging comedy profiles and that works well for everyone. So we are very, very keen to work with new talent. Uh, Yanni is a good example of someone who hadn't done uh, anything on TV before, I don't think, and is a uh, brilliant front for that show. Uh, and there are others too, but we, we often marry them up with, with existing talent in order, in order to help everyone. Um, can, we, can we hear a bit more about the Yanni show? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Yanni uh, is a car customiser. He had done a few odd bits on car shows, actually, but he'd never had his own show. And uh, he's got the most fantastic personality. And we discovered that he, the guys, the team who customised the cars, these incredibly high-end cars, were a really fantastic, diverse bunch of characters. They just had something... Oh, hello. Um, they had something... Um, really kind of fresh and modern and energetic about them and they were they were fun they went to work and they had lots of fun and yanni's got a brilliant personality and we took a risk we we, we were looking for car content on dave we were looking for shows to play uh, sort of early evening the the sort of requirements early evening for big name talent are less it's more about the stories and the narratives and are you in the right space and do the shows feel right for the audience at that time of the evening and he had a massive uh, profile, uh, social media profile. He had over a million followers and he was a really, really heavy user of social media. People all over the world absolutely adoring him, following him. And we just felt that we would, we would try and see whether we could make it, we could tr migrate and translate what he did in that space into a TV show. And Barcroft have made, made the first series. And what was interesting about that show was it was the first show that we box setted, wasn't yeah, it? The I'll, first one that, yeah. I was about to say, as well as being a real success on day, yeah. on, the, on the channel to the linear audience, it was a massive success on UK yeah. Play as well, so onto our on demand service. So but that was a new strategy for us, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's really important about you know, the future and going forward in the future and how do we continue to grow UK TV. TV, you know, that investment into new content, into original content is really important, as is into new services like, like Play, um, which is, you know, as we all know, a big part of what the future of TV will look like. And, and I think really, really important to remember, just you, you're asking, like, you know, what, what's specific about us? I don't, the, the R word, the risk word. Risk. It's like a bit of a dirty risk. word because yeah. you'll hear in every session that you go to here. But I think what's really important, or, or an angle on that for us, is that we will make shows that other people won't make. You know, we took we took Dara O'Brien and we made a maths comedy show with them, <laughs> and it rated really well. And, uh, and everyone and, loves maths comedy, though. That's <laughs> an easy win. So, so, so great. Just, just before that went out, someone said, "If that rates, I'll eat my hat." And I, I was quite glad that it did because <laughs> otherwise I probably wouldn't be sitting here. But um, but you know, we've, we 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 made Emma Willis, and she didn't get that show show away, away elsewhere. We took Alex Horn and Greg Davis and put and, and gave you know we gave Greg Davis. The rule over five five uh, comics and, and, and uh, individuals to go and set them ridiculous tasks. That stuff wouldn't have happened elsewhere, and we made it work. And then other people, other broadcasters, are kind of coming on board with that idea. So we will make wacky stuff. There's definitely some value in stuff being out of the ordinary and unusual, and it helps because it helps us get noticed. Yeah. So. It's so is there a thing that people bring you time and time again? I wonder. Is there a thing that comes onto your desk that you think I don't want to see any more of that? Um, I don't mean about an individual in particular. I don't like pull people out of the crowd like <laughs> yeah. Sarah. Stop emailing me. But um, welcome. No, um, I think well, on, certainly on W. I think a lot of producers pitch us ITV2 talent, thinking that we're a digital, we're in the digital space. That that will probably migrate. And ITV2 talent is fantastic. On ITV2, they've worked really hard to create a very distinctive roster of faces. They're really clear about what, who their audience are uh, and who they want. And actually, we're, we're not we're not that channel so we're looking for you know faces that we feel fit the profile and actually so that, that that's something and I think 
it, it can be a bit dispiriting when people will give you a treatment with, you know, it might, might be a celebrity vehicle, there might be 10 names, and you look at and, and none of them are right. And then I think, well, you probably haven't watched anything on our channel at all because, you know, we've done 40 episodes of John Bishop, for example, interviewing fabulous people. That will give you an idea of the types of people that we're interested in. And we've done lots of other stuff too. So across all of the things that we've now done on W, you know, there's quite a body of work now. I think and that tone marries it all. Yeah, the tone, you know, it's, it's sort of upmarket, intelligent. It, it's just, you know, I think, I think, you know, the Cherry Healy piece and the Emma Willis piece really, really, I hope, should give people some idea of the kinds of sort of faces and, and the narratives that we're looking for in that space. I mean, not exclusively, we're also looking for, you know, we want, we're always saying to producers, what's our tattoo fixes? You know, find a really entertaining precinct that feels modern and, you know, that will, that, that's relevant for 30 something women, younger women, what would that be? And, and I think uh, well, so. One other thing, right, really, that people bring us that we that is that we don't kind of want is small ideas. Yeah. People bring you know. Th there's that old, the old world of multi-channel and terrestrial. We have terrestrial ambitions in that yeah. world. Anything that feels multi-channel, anything that feels small and unambitious, it's not for us. Don't bother. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say shush just for a sec, just for a sec, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions because it's time for the Q and A. We were gonna put some echo on my voice there, but it's not this. But forget it. Um, okay. Um, so uh, this is kind of the last bit. So you've done really well. You're nearly at the end now. Uh, you've got the speedboat. That's you've banked that. The washing machine. You're definitely getting that. Um, these are three questions from the festival app. I've been saying it all day. Got to get the app. It's so great. It's really fantastic. Um, it went down better this morning because I've just recycled that joke. Um, so here's a question from a young person, an unnamed young person. Okay. <laughs> I don't think a young person wrote this, it's ridiculous, but it's, I, think it, I think the idea is from them. Uh, the future of uh, programme delivery is SVOD, but the UK TV platform is a bit glitchy. Do young people say glitchy? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> what are your plans to improve it, says young person? And they're furious, I can tell by the caps, they're furious. Really unhappy. <laughs> um, Look, you could play as a developing platform. We're, we're constantly investing in that and making it better. There's a, there'll be a new version, we're rolling out a new version of the app uh, in the coming months. Um, we've just gone through a period of introducing registration now to the app as well. So we've got, I think, about 1.2 million people now are registered users for UKT Play. And that helps us because that means we can use that to you know, create a more defined uh, proposition for those people, make it more deeply personal for them, um, and, and make sure we're serving the right content to the right people. Um, and you know, we continue to innovate with the way we're using shows. We talk about you know, Yanni being a box set drop, so we're looking at how we use our channels, linear channels, and our on-demand service to, to marry that together, those two things together, to really take that content to the audience in the best way possible. So it's something we're constantly working on, constantly developing, as are all the sort of broadcasters and all OTT platforms that are trying to make these services better and better. Uh, but uh, there'll be a yeah, there'll be new new iteration of the service. Blame their dial-up. They won't know. They won't know that it's there. It's all about the broadband. Um, a drama producer has asked you this. An unnamed drama producer may also be a young person. Um, it's great that UKTV is getting into drama. That's nice to hear. Uh, but it's expensive and very competitive. Are you in it for the long run? So, <laughs> so first, uh, so it's worth saying, uh, and we, so we've been having conversations with a number of drama producers for a while. It's worth saying that we are we're commissioning at a decent level. So we've been working very hard with other um, co-production partners and distributors to make sure that we have the money to fund at the level we want. Uh, and generally, with our contribution and contribution of others, we're looking at about 1.2 million an app. Now, you can make decent quality drama for 1.2 million an There are definitely lots of things in the UK that are made for more than that. We don't need to do that. We're going to concentrate on brilliant character, brilliant story, brilliant writing. We are going to be able to produce some. We've, we've got the you know the the means to produce some fantastic drama. Uh, so. Are we in it for the for the long run? Absolutely, yeah. This is a really important area. It was a big step in the maturity of us. And Steve and I talked about doing drama for for a while before we, we kind of galvanised everyone and, and got the money together and and started uh, enacting the strategy. It's it's a um, we can see how popular it is amongst audiences at home. Uh, it is the leading genre for a lot of people and a lot of audiences, uh, and it's important that we're there. And then actually, we don't just um, kind of start out with the current strategy. The, the current strategy will evolve, and it may spread to other channels. When we started the current strategy, it was around drama and alibi. The first thing we did was commission a drama for W. So you know, we're always looking for ways of expanding it and doing. What are they going to do? Uh, They're loose cannons. So, so yeah, expect more. <laughs> um, sorry, trap you up. But we, ha we have time for one more, and this uh, is from the app, the aforementioned app, uh, and it's from a producer. 
Okay, that could be a number of people in this room. Um, I'm furious. No, it doesn't start that. It says, uh, <laughs> there seems to be constant speculation about the future of ownership of UK TV, uh, with Channel 4 the latest possible purchaser. Isn't this very unsettling? I feel like it's a leading question. This person seems unsettled. No, no it shouldn't be unsettling at all. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, it's lovely to be talked about and people be interested in UK TV. <laughs> and as you say, it's, it's gone on for years and years and years because UK TV is a successful company. You know, it's growing. We've gone from uh, the last 10 years from being, you know, it's kind of 5% of the commercial market now to being 10% of the commercial market. We're making great content, great shows. We've got great channels. So it's kind of, you know, I don't think it's not surprising that there's interest in people that want to work with us, want to be partners and, and be part of that kind of UK TV family. I think for us and for everyone in the room, it's really about focusing on making great shows uh, for great channels. Um, and we just leave it at that. That's what we focus on. Perfect. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. I haven't told you I'm going to ask you this. But if there's a, a program that you would give a shout out to, it can be something we've mentioned, something that's on now or coming up that kind of really encompasses the feel of UK TV, what would you like to shout out? One show, that's hard. Ultimate, one show each. You can Ultimate have one show Matchmaker. Each. Ultimate Matchmaker Ultimate on matchmaker. W. It's a fantastic uh, sort of first dates meets made in Chelsea, slightly constructed reality. Uh, it, second episode goes out tonight. I'm sure you're not busy. I'm sure, <laughs> watch sure it. You, you can all watch it. Richard, do you have one? Yeah, I do. So, um, uh, Do you have one? I've got one, yeah. <laughs> uh, Expedition with Steve Backshaw. Uh, it's a completely new area for Dave. Uh, it's a really big deal for us. We did a deal with Fremantle, who put a lot of money on the table, and also the BBC, really unusually. So we've constructed a, a very specific deal. Ten hours, Steve Backshaw, every episode, goes to a different part of the globe where no one has ever been before. Yeah. Or no light has ever shone, or no one has ever seen. Amazing. It's, it's extraordinary. OK, you've got to top and it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a really terrible plug. So I'm going to go for Zapped, which you've seen a, cl a clip already, because it's amazing. But also because uh, if you like that clip, you can go and watch the entire episode tomorrow night <laughs> of the film. Uh, first episode being screened at the film house just around the corner. Uh, we've got Steve Coogan introducing seven o'clock. We've got Steve Coogan introducing the show and then a Q&A afterwards with some of the cast with Sharon Rooney and Ken Collard. So uh, go and watch it. And, and I fun. set you up for that one. It's beautiful. And you smashed yeah. it out. And also because I'd forgotten to mention <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We had to get the plug in. Uh, please help me in thanking Steve, Hilary and Richard. Thank you very much.